It's Thursday, July 14th, and you're listening to the Geek News Central Podcast, sponsored by GoDaddy.com. Geek News Central is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. Everyone, I got a great show lined up for you tonight. Got a lot to talk about. We've made a few tweaks here, and let me talk to you about a potential $800 upgrade. This is going to blow your mind. Got a lot of stuff to share. You know what comes next. Strap in. Here it comes. All right, people, I need a go no go for the Geek News Central podcast. Digital archive recorders. We're go flight. Microphone. We're go flight. Video feed. Go. Web browser. Go. RSS data stream aggregator. Go flight. Interflux totism suppressor. All right. I'm confused. Host readiness check. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. The Geek News Central podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go. Q Todd in five. Button, button, who's got the button? Four. There is no cause for alarm. Three. Everybody hold on to something. Two. Just press the button. One. It's showtime. Aloha and welcome to the Geek News Central Podcast. My name is Todd Cochran, and we're as live as it can be from the beautiful state of Hawaii via the Geek News Central Studio overlooking Greater Honolulu. Hey, everyone, welcome to the show. And make sure you get over to geeknewscentral.com. Check out our great content. Of course, check out our archive podcast available all over the website. You're going to find the Gadget Professor. You're going to find Robot Underpants. You're going to find the Chrome Show. You're going to find the Saturday Morning Tech Show. And, of course, what you're watching here, the Geek News Central podcast, produced every Tuesday and Thursday, excuse me, every Monday and Thursday night, released every Tuesday and Friday morning. So I want to welcome you to the show. And, of course, make sure you get subscribed to the show. You'll find the a uh, real easy way to get subscribed by going over to the website. And really, all you got to do is is click on the website. And something I didn't prep here. Let me spring this screen up for you so you can see. <laughs> um, so all you got to do there is that second column of the website. And there's basically audio, video, subscription points with the RSS via iTunes, via Zoom Marketplace. So you get subscribed to the specific show that you want to. You see that the Chrome show now has an iTunes listing. Actually, the uh, Zoom subscription came in as well. So we'll be getting that added there so that you'll be able to uh, get subscribed uh, via Zoom if you want to watch the Chrome show over there. Well, the newsletter that I send out following the show is a great way to stay abreast of when new shows are coming out. And also we'll get you all the show notes on all the topics that I'm going to cover tonight. So I encourage you to... Um, basically get subscribed to the newsletter as well. That way you'll stay connected here with the Ohana. And of course, all of you that are longtime listeners of the show, I want to thank you for being part of the Ohana, being part of the family here at Geek News Central. It is a, um, it's my pleasure to bring this show to you. And I've uh, been uh, doing some slicing and dicing around here over the last couple of days. I think I found a happy medium on where I want things to be. I'm uh, uh, very pleased with the last uh, upload of the video and the quality we're seeing there. had a few comments come back to it. They saw a noticeable difference in the quality. So uh, I think tonight will be the night we're going to be starting a, a second video feed where we're going to have an audio version available as well as, of course, the essentially the high-def version available for those of you that are watching on devices like the Roku and Boxy. So we'll have that all broke out on the website um, if it doesn't show right up immediately um, after the show tonight, it'll be up there tomorrow with all the information. Of course, I want to encourage you to tune in to our Saturday morning tech show, uh, Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern. I think we're going to do another hangout. I think we had a lot of fun with that last week. We're going to try that again uh, this week. We're going to have a go around. We'll be launching the hangout right at uh, just a few minutes before 9 o'clock Pacific. We're going to have things wired up a little bit differently here. But I look forward to uh, being able to uh, to bring that to you on uh, this coming uh, this coming weekend. Um, well, what else is going on here? We are in the midst of, I guess, a, for a better word, a little bit of, of change in that um, I've been trying to optimize things on the show here for for a few weeks and uh, changing up some of the processes. I did some discussions with. Uh, um, the robot, uh, excuse me, with um, with Don Bain and his son today talking about uh, video. Of course, Don's the host of The Gadget Professor and talking about some things we could try. I think we've uh, come to a happy median on that. But uh, overall, I'm pretty pleased with where we're at in the in the, in the shift here. And we'll keep you advised uh, as we make uh, 
some more adjustments. Now, one of the things I was going to do was we were going to upgrade the internet here. Of course, I'm on a commercial service here, and uh, the stream gets pushed out on two different internet connections. And really, I'm, I'm bandwidth starved. I really am. I need more bandwidth. So I called the commercial account today, and I said, hey, I want to go. You know, I know you guys offer a 5 meg plan, 5 megs up. I said, what's it going to cost me to uh, make the jump from what I have right now at, at one meg to five megs? And I figured eh, a couple hundred bucks, right? Maybe 300 max for about five megs up here in Hawaii. Everything is much more expensive. And the guy told me it's 800 a month. And that's with a three-year contract. I was like, <laughs> I just could not believe it. I really couldn't. Um, the cost was just extraordinarily high, and uh, what do you do? You uh, you just basically say, well, forget it. We're going to live with what we have for now, and uh, that's the way it is. It's just the show cannot afford <laughs> an $800 a month upgrade just to have uh, the additional up upload bandwidth. As much as I need it, we'll have to wait till we take the business to the next level and do what uh, we're doing with some other things. I am noticing a little bit of ring back here tonight. I want to reach over and turn my uh, return path down a little bit so it isn't going to be driving me nuts in the headphones all night. There we go. Much better. It was ringing just a little bit. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but uh, I was cranking the audio levels up in order to support the the additional recording devices because it was dropping some dbs on the uh on one of the recordings and i may have just tweaked it a little bit too high uh because i can kind of hear just a little bit of ringing when things peek out but uh hopefully that doesn't cross over into the actual audio content um what else is going on here um if you're going to be attending a conference be our eyes and ears so i think we've already got our first person lined up to cover a show so if you're going to be going to a tech conference or a social media conference, consider being our eyes and ears. And also want to announce that we're going to have two new sponsors coming to the show next week. One I'm really excited about bringing on board and another one that we've had uh, before. So uh, we're excited about uh, bringing those new sponsors on board. And uh, basically, it's really going to help the bottom line here, help us keep the lights on. And as always, we want you to uh, take advantage of our sponsor offers. And, of course, GoDaddy being a longtime sponsor here of the show, make sure you get over to GoDaddy.com and check out all the great deals. Now, we got a great deal going on this month, and this is really, I mean, it, this is an awesome deal. Basically, you're going to be able to get, and I'm going to flip over to the website here, you're going to be able to get uh, three months of economy web hosting for just $1.99. Is that remarkable? Is that a remarkable price or what? A buck ninety-nine per month for three months of economy hosting. So what you do is in order to save the most amount of money is you, you subscribe to that economy web hosting. And then at the end of three months, you renew it with one of my other promo codes and you save yourself a bunch of cash. Now let me make one more change here. Sorry to do that on you, but uh, I'm getting just this little bit of ringing. And do you guys on the... Uh, yeah, the guys on the stream say they don't hear it there. Well, I guess that's that's good. I guess it's just me. I mean, we went to these uh, in-ear um, headphones, and they are a lot more sensitive. Um, I can really pick up almost every nuance of what's going on in the audio path. And uh, so it's made me crank the levels down a little bit. And I think what's happened here is that uh, in my tweaking today to, to bunch stuff up a little more, I probably got it on the upper end of where it needs to be. Um, what else is going on? Um, hey, let's talk about what's going on over there with Leo Laporte and Twit. I am just uh, astounded. They, <laughs> I understand why he's selling bricks. He, they are spending, whew, I, I don't even want to think about how much it costs to put that studio together. I bet he's got, I was just kind of doing quick math today. I was walking around looking at, I know he's got 60, at least $60,000 in cameras alone. And he's going to some unique, a unique camera setup. He's not even using real pro cameras. He's using a, um, uh, some Casio cameras and then going HDMI out to a, an HDMI to SDI converter. 
But I know he's got uh, an amazing switch panel from Black Magic. I think that was like fifteen grand. Of course, he's got a TriCaster, uh, an eight fifty down there. That's twenty five thousand. And then along with some other boxes, I can't even find the prices on. He's going to drop Skype. He's not going to be using Skype anymore. They're using a service called Video V I D Y O to bring their host in to actually do Skype calls. I don't know how that's going to work for people that I don't know people that everyone's going to have to have their own video service. I don't know how that fully works. I haven't done the full research on that, but I knew he was going to a new solution for his guests coming in remotely. And it looks like it's going to be nice because what they've done is they've, um, they're bringing in like a, a high def, basically high def video. And so everyone that's coming in is not going to be coming in on a Skype connection anymore. It's going to be coming in on this high, high def connection. And I'm sure the quality is going to be a lot better. All the audio routing, I think they were saying they had um, 120 some different lights they control in the building. So they have spent whew, some huge amount of cash. And I noticed when he was doing the tour, he said he was like, please buy bricks. You know, So it was obvious that uh, they've spent some cash over there. So, you know, um, a big undertaking and I have to applaud him. And I, I'm I'm just insanely jealous. It's it's in, you know I'm happy for them. They're doing great, and I want them to succeed uh, because really it helps the entire space. Um, it really does. But the uh, just the the growth and the ability to have a nice space like that uh, is is pretty amazing. So if anybody can pull it off, Leo can. And congratulations to his team. And they're ten min, ten days away from going live with their new stuff. I'll definitely be watching when they, when they launch, uh, the brick twit house, <laughs> you know, it's kind of a little pun on words there. If you want to really, uh, um, you want to work on that. I, I don't know how long he's going to say brick twit house because I'm sure someone could uh, substitute something else for twit, but it's definitely not that. But, uh, I think he's going to have some fun dealing with lighting in there because he's got these big bay windows, a lot of light coming in. So it'll be interesting to see how that all gets, you know, kind of darkened down to have the control on the lighting um, in their studio. So we'll see what happens with them. But again, we're going to be doing a Chrome show on Saturday. And, of course, Robot Underpants will be out for on Monday. And then, uh, of course, the new Gadget Professor just posted at Geek News Central. Hasn't he been doing some great stuff? Don't you love the stuff Don's doing? And if you haven't checked out the Robot, I mean, the Gadget Professor, I'm getting all the shows mixed up. The Gadget Professor in a previous couple of weeks, please check it out. And, of course, if you've got comments on this show, make sure you drop me a line here at 619-342-7365. Call in and leave your comments. And, of course, you can always email me here at geeknews at uh, gmail.com. And we want to thank GoDaddy for being a longtime sponsor here. You can get over to find all my GoDaddy codes at geeknewscentral.com forward slash GoDaddy. And follow us on Facebook as well, facebook.com forward slash geeknews. And that will get you all connected into our Social media web, and of course, I'm at Geek News on, on Twitter. So uh, let me look and see if I've got everything in the stack done here. Don't forget, we are also available post-show on the Roku and on the Boxy. So uh, if, you, if, you, if you have a Roku or Boxy, get subscribed to the Tech Podcast channel over there and, uh, and catch me on your, on your big screen, and uh, that way you can watch there. So let me look in the list. And Shoko's still in Japan. She's now scheduled to come home on the 25th. So uh, kids, house is surviving. I noticed that there's a few rooms that are getting a little wear and tear. So I was like, <laughs> we're going to have an old-fashioned working party here uh, come Saturday. And it's going to be uh, top to bottom. We're going to make sure that we stay ahead of this thing. The last thing I want her to do is come home and say, oh, my God, this house is dirty. <laughs> <laughs> and because as soon as she does, I'll be in the doghouse. That's that's for sure. Already got a whole stack of stuff for you tonight. And uh, let me go ahead here and open up the first news commentary for you. Um, I think I've gotten through everything. Yep, I have. And let me go over here and bring this up. I hate to do this. I got to make one more adjustment. This audio is still driving me simply insane. So let me reach back here and turn it down one more time. And hopefully, uh, that's too low.
Don't you love it when I'm just doing uh, tweaks mid-show? It sucks. It really does. Don't have anybody here to run the board except for me. So it is what it is. Let's talk about Netflix. I'm sure all of you that are on Netflix got your email talking about the price increase. And boy, they have just taken it. Uh, boy, customers have been abusing them in a big way over the new pricing. Um, I was, you know, I, I kind of looked at the pricing and I I, I even reacted negatively, negatively to it. Um, it's like a $6 price hike if you're doing, I'm doing two DVDs plus streaming. And, you know, I think most of us reacted with the same rendition of what I'm showing up on the screen. Everyone was like WTF over. And the customers really took it out on Netflix in a big way on Facebook. It's been a trending topic on Twitter for two days. Two days in a row that there's been... And I think we're even going to the third day now where Netflix is, it's been a trending term. And usually nothing trends on Netflix for more than, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe a couple of hours. And uh, that tells you how people are, are really upset about this. And I got to thinking, you know, okay, so how many DVDs are we getting a month? If the kids are making sure that, and if I remember to make sure everything gets in the mailbox, we're getting eight a month. Um, maybe... You know, maybe we're, you know, there'll be some slop in there one way or the other. Because really the only time we watch videos, so that's, you know, if I think about how much it would cost me to rent from Redbox, that would be $8. So, you know, if I'm doing eight videos a month with Netflix, and we usually, usually watch, now I'm finding that we're watching more DVDs than we are streaming because the selections on Netflix streaming is, is semi-limited, although I did find some new stuff today put in the queue. Um, so I have to look at that and I, I you know, I kind of like both, um, options, but it's, you know, it's a, it's about a $20 bill now. And uh, I really have to think about that if I want to make the, uh, make the jump here. So what your costs now are going to be is if you want streaming and one DVD at a time, it's $15.98. If you want unlimited streaming and two DVDs out at a time, it's $19.98. Then moving on up to three DVDs and streaming is $23, or actually $24. Four DVDs and unlimited streaming is $30 a month. Still cheaper than going to the movies, for sure. And you still get a lot of uh, a lot of use out of this. So, you know, what's the alternatives? Well, the folks at, over at uh, at Blockbuster said, oh, let's, uh, let's, you know, this is an opportunity here. Let's try to get people to switch over to Blockbuster. But it's kind of funny because uh, Blockbuster presented this deal, and oh, this is a great program. You're looking at what you're gonna, you know, what you're gonna get for the first thirty days, and then after the first thirty days, it's actually two dollars more a month than what Netflix costs. So you know, you're gonna save a little money for the first thirty days on Blockbuster, and this was over at GigaOm.com, but then you're gonna bounce right into the higher price point. Um, so really, you're not saving any money by going to Blockbuster. And I was looking at some of the offerings on uh, on Amazon, and Amazon doesn't have near the the base of videos that um, that Netflix does. So then the question is, which way do we? Which way do you go? And um, I think you have to stay with Netflix and you suck up the price increase or drop the DVDs and stay with streaming. Now, Netflix knew that they were going to get huge, huge pushback on this. Uh, they had done some surveys. They knew that people were not going to be happy. But uh, you got to understand, they're, they're probably under some pressure to make sure that they, their bottom line is met and they stay in business. I think we all can agree that's the last company we want to go out for as many of us that use it. But at the same time, I'm looking at, okay, Redbox, I can, you know, as I'm driving up the hill here to come to the house, there's two Redbox machines really within about two miles of my home. And generally, I can find a, uh, a video, but it's, it's kind of a pain unless we're stopping in there for milk or bread. And it's one of those type of stop places. You know, I re and it's, if there isn't a line at the machine already, I really, and a kid, you know, usually my son's the first one up there trying to find something. Um, 
so I guess we're just going to have to play with it, play with the, the numbers and see where it makes the most sense. So what are you guys going to do? Are you guys going to drop Netflix now? Are you going to make the uh, the bounce and you're going to just drop the DVD deliveries? Or are you going to stay with the streaming portion? Love to hear your feedback on this. Definitely, you know, call the Hotmail line at 619-342-7365 or drop me an email here at geeknews at gmail.com, geeknews at gmail.com for your comments. And uh, love to hear your feedback on what you think, uh, you know, what basically the situation with Netflix. Now, they could have added some new features. They could have added something cool, but they didn't. It's the same service. It really didn't change. So um, that was, you know, they could have they could have done something there to sweeten the pot a little bit, but but they had not. Now let's talk changing gears here with a new service that's come to the United States. Those of you that live in the UK already know about Spotify, and I was quite pleased. I woke up this morning and I knew this service was coming to Hawaii. I'm not coming to Hawaii, coming to the United States. And I checked the email, and I had gotten a email with a promo code to sign up for their premium service. And let me see if I can actually bring this up. And I don't dare play any of the music because I can, you know, that would be a, a bit of a problem. But for those of you that haven't seen the actual interface on this, they've done a slick job. And it's going to ask me. It's going to ask me for my pay. No, I don't want to do that. So let me see if I can scrunch this down and bring it over into the other screen so you guys can see this. It looks a lot... Oh, I have to do more scrunching here because I'm on a smaller screen on the the duplicator. Well, let me bring this over here. Now let's see if I can expand it. And this doesn't do it any justice, folks. So just remember, this is in a 1024 by 768 is the screen size I'm showing you right now. So you're, you know, you're going to have this on your bigger screen. So what I've got in here is it, it's really easy. It tells you what's new. And um, I was playing some Britney Spears stuff, and I was playing some uh, Coldplay, and I was kind of messing around with it today a little bit. And then there is your library. It actually taps your iTunes library, and it able to – so you can actually play stuff that's on your computer. And then you can um, – right here is basically the iTunes listing – and you can sync music from Spotify to a iPhone device, and it really works. Um, I was pretty blown away by the the interface more than anything. Um, it just looks a lot like iTunes, and I was talking with my kids about it. Now, you guys know that my kids are j really big fans of the uh, Zune where you can play everything, but I'm getting this pushback now that, uh, well, they want an iPod Touch or they want a little iPod. They want, you know, they want something small. And uh, so this may be the option for them, for me to get them a little, you know, small. Uh, I don't know whether they make the Nanos anymore, but those small players and then be able to sync this with this. And for the premium service for nine ninety five a month, you really can carry stuff it's just the same type of a deal like uh like zune offers and uh, take the music with you and then if you don't of course if it expires i believe it goes off but um to me this is this is pretty awesome and i was really impressed so far with the uh um with the service and uh, being able to go right into my itunes library as well which was cool and sort by artists. It's you know it's not quite as fancy. It doesn't sort exactly everything else. But you know for our service not being in this service has gotten rave reviews um, outside of the United States prior to its launch today. But I was pretty jazzed. They sent me a coupon to basically get a premium account and for free. I don't know how long it's going to last. Uh, maybe thirty days or something like that. But apparently they also have a free service as well that actually um, is ad supported so that you have to actually um, listen to an ad be in between music and so forth from time to time. So uh, pretty cool. I know there's lots of other services that are here in the United States, but I was pretty, uh, pretty impressed so far uh, with Spotify. And um, 
that's cool. It works. And uh, I'll play with syncing with my iPhone here directly. But you also can load, download. They've got apps as well so that you could actually use the, the their uh, their onboard app for the Android, for iPhone. I think they've got one for the BlackBerry as well. So anyway, that uh, is a cool new service that's come here, Spotify, S-P-O-T-I-F-Y uh, dot com. Let's talk about broadband caps a little bit. Um, we've talked about how everyone's starting to use more and more bandwidth. We're sending stuff to the cloud, and we're going to see this with iOS 5 and the update to iCloud. Of course, there was no introduction today of OS 10 Lion. I think a lot of people were disappointed. For whatever reason, uh, Apple was not ready. Uh, we all thought we were getting Apple upgrades today, but it didn't uh, didn't come down. But, you know, all of us are going to be using a lot more cloud services, and we're going to be using a lot more bandwidth than what we really have used in the past. And along with all these services like Netflix, and you'd be able to use a boxy or you use any type of external box that's not from your cable provider, that gives you access to content. And I've got a Google TV. I've got a Voodoo box. You know, I got four different devices out there now, actually five um, that we play around with and check and look at the updates. You know, it's, it's a lot of it's for this show, but at the same time, you know, we've, we've cut the cord here. So anywhere we can get content, we get it. So we're using a lot of bandwidth as a family, just, you know, doing, you know, watching stuff. So, this individual that was on Comcast, he went over his 250 gig per month cap two months in a row, and Comcast canceled him. And it turns out that it, what was happening was is he was um, had an incorrectly set a backup script that was sending a huge amount of data up to Amazon every month. I mean, every day, instead of doing uh, it was like he was uploading his entire. Um, system every night instead of doing an incremental backup on what had changed so by the time he got it figured out and so forth it was too late and they canceled him and they're serious he's not he can't get his internet service back and he's pissed as you can imagine but the point that they wanted to make was when there's a problem for the average consumer they don't know what to do Okay, someone, let's say someone, you, you know, your mom or someone that's not super tech savvy has a machine hacked and all of a sudden it's being used for nefarious reasons and it's being used in a way that you would not expect it to be used. The, how is that person going to know? And all of a sudden they've, they've used all their bandwidth. Um, again, as people adopt cloud services, you know, we're, you don't really think about how much bandwidth you're using, but you're going to have to to watch this. And there has, to, and if they're not a clear counter on how much bandwidth they're using, you know, the residential service is not clear cut anymore. It's too many different variables from too many different companies. So make sure you know very clearly what your terms of service is with your your cable provider, your internet provider, so that you don't get shut down. And pay attention to to what you're doing. At the same point, don't use your residential service. See, this is something else they're doing. They're going after people that are using their residential service for a business purpose and and, and chopping those people too. But, you know, you look at what I was priced out today, five megs up, five megs down, $800 a month. It's understandable why people don't want to at least here in Hawaii, it's, 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 you know, it's ridiculous. So anyway, um, these broadband caps are starting to cause issues. And it's specifically this guy got in trouble because of the cloud. And it wasn't, it wasn't Apple, it was Amazon and is doing his backups. And I think he also was subscribed to a different backup provider. So I think he was doing two different backups. So anyway, he got in trouble, and he's now trying to figure out how he's going to get the Internet, and he shut down. That would suck. How, you know, think about that. You just, and it's, and what choice do you have? Most of us do not have secondary choices. You have Comcast, and usually Comcast is it, or you have Time Warner, and Time Warner is it. Here in Hawaii, we've got uh, Time Warner and Clear and... Verizon and uh, Hawaiian Telecom DSL, but nothing compares in speed to Time Warner. The DSL is like three megs down, you know, 750K up. 
So that's not a super viable connection. Same thing with the clear connection. It's two and a half, maybe three down. This is on their 4G network and maybe 700 up on a, gr on a great day. And that's with five bars on the clear device. So as compared now, um, on our residential stuff, you get good speed. So I guess we're just going to have to be real careful and uh, be advised out there that things, you know, things are getting ugly and uh, people are losing their internet service because of these caps. Okay, let's talk about uh, Ford for just a second here. Ford has introduced Live Operator for Sync users. And uh, this, is a, this is a pretty big deal by, by Ford. Ford announced a new sync service featured called Operator Assist, which lets drivers speak to a real person in order to help with inquiries such as business searches or address entry. Um, it's currently in beta and being offered free to registered users of sync service. Um, they haven't said what it's ultimately going to cost, but um, this is kind of cool. If you need to find some place, um, and you, you don't have, you know, how, how this has happened to me a lot. I've been on the road and especially in the mainland and I'm trying to find a place and I can't find it. And I, you know, I'm looking for a place to pull over so I can get my iPad out and try to, you know, I'm trying to find an address. And sometimes you know, the, the GPS tries to take me on a wild goose chase. I think it'd be pretty cool to be able to push your forward sync button the operator comes on and say, I'm looking for business such and such. I'm in such and such town. Can you can you push the address to my to my Ford Sync GPS? They look it up, you know, a minute later, boom, you are navigating to the location you need to go to. Um, that to me is awesome. I don't know what it's gonna cost, but they say 70% of all sync service calls are for business search and directions. Is say, they're saying our customers asked for additional assistance in situations where the voice request was not understood. So being able to be connected with a live person at any time contributes to that assistance. So good write-up by Andrew and a pretty cool new service by some additional service by uh, Ford and their sync. Makes you want to really look at a Ford for your next vehicle, doesn't it? All right, let's talk about the Android market. How many uh, apps are in the Android market? Do you guys have any idea? You know, the only thing we ever hear about is Apple and the App Store and their, you know, their their massive number of uh, of apps. Well, boy, that's loading slow. Well, I guess it's still going to load. It must mean the internet's still working, unlike what happened earlier in the week. Um, Android market now has more than a quarter million applications. 250,000 applications are not available and they're having uh, without more than 6 billion downloads. So Android uh, has grown up. The Android market's grown up. Don't forget, you can pick up the Blueberry app on the Android market. Feel free to download that. It's a free download. You can uh, find all the podcasts, part of the uh, Raw Voice Networks of shows. So uh, definitely uh, download that on the Android market. But uh, Pretty cool. More than a quarter million applications at this point. So, you know, I was even kind of surprised to see that number as well. A few months ago, Google uh, started censoring various piracy-related keywords. Um, two widely used search services, according to Google, the anti-piracy filter was an attempt to curb online copyright infringement. Um, so what they did here is basically they're watching the results of searches for BitTorrent sites, the peer-to-peer -peer sites, and it shows a distinct decline in the number of basically people being able to get to those sites via search results. Um, now, it doesn't, just because people are not uh, searching for that does not mean, or they're searching for it not finding anything, it doesn't mean that there's been a, a drop in piracy rates. But uh, there is a huge dip. And what is this, in millions or in billions of searches? Look here, does it say? It doesn't give any context on, on the right-hand side of the graph. 
it shows, and this is an article that's over on torrentfreak.com, they basically show the, the dates. Let me bring this up for you. You guys can see it as well. Um, they have the dates here. You go October, January, April, July of 11, and then you have you show the traffic coming from October to, of 2010 to January of 11, staying uh, relatively flat, and then when they implemented the filters, it's just immediately dropping off and going from about whatever this 80 was, 80 million a month down to 40 million a month, I would assume. This is in millions of searches. So it shows, and this is again another site, Mega Upload, where it went from about 80 million down to about 45. So they definitely had an impact on either people were not searching for those words anymore or they weren't uh, providing results that was sending them to those specific websites. So um, interesting to see what uh, Google's anti-piracy filter has done. Now, speaking about peer-to-peer -peer sites, um, those of you that live in Spain, there's been a ruling today. Lawyers defending a file-sharing site say a new legal victory provides final confirmation that sites providing links to copyright works are lawful in Spain. A file, a complaint was filed in uh, in 2009, claiming that uh, a website called index-web.com violated its rights. But and basically, this was because uh, they were linking to content; they weren't actually hosting it. So um, this is a good ruling for the uh, for those sites in Spain that link to copyrighted content, and they're, they're not being held liable for doing so. You know, they don't say whether or not this was peer-to-peer -peer or if it was actually a direct link to a, um, to a media file um, or if it was a link to a torrent. Of course, of course, I guess it wouldn't matter one way or the other. But um, anyway, the site has uh, been uh, upheld in their right to do this. And uh, this, is a, this is a big win uh, by uh, site owners in, in Spain. If you have been on the App Store today for Mac, you'll have noticed that there are starting to show up uh, Lion Ready OS X apps, and uh, some of them have started to populate. There was an expectation today that uh, OS X Lion was going to uh, make its debut, but it appears there's some speculation saying that there was some last-minute bugs that Apple had to kill, and they're going to be sending out a um, an update on Friday or today to... Uh, to their screeners, the people that have been testing, in order to validate they've gotten the last ones uh, cleared, and that it looks like there could be a July 19th or July 22nd launch now uh, of Lion. So another five to seven, five to ten, five to eight days uh, before it punches out. So I know many of you are disappointed on that, and we're probably hoping that that was going to happen today, and um, it didn't happen. So uh, we'll keep our eyes peeled. But the uh, store is starting to show uh, Lion Ready apps. So be careful when you're out there buying stuff, too, to make sure that you're not uh, downloading something that's for the new operating system that you don't have already. Hey, Google has upgraded the image search. Um, one thing I wish Google would do on this is I've had to caution my team members at Geek News Central about making sure that we're not using anyone's images that are copyrighted. And... One thing that'd be cool is if in this new search results, if they had the ability, you know, they were, I think they implemented this, but I don't see in the new search results where you can sort by um, images that are free from royalty and others have a Creative Commons license behind them. But now you can sort by subject, by size, by color, by type, by view, and if they're new or not. So, but still, please be careful out there. If you have a blog, make sure that you're being very careful on using images. Um, it could be a very, very costly uh, mistake to put up a copyrighted image. So, uh, you know, I, I reiterate this with my team members um, all the time to make sure that uh, the images we're putting up, putting up are not uh, under copyright. Google did another thing today. Those of you that are using Google News, and let's see if I can play this for you. It's called Shareable Google News Badges for your favorite topics. And uh, this is only about a minute long. So let me see if I can play this. And if you guys can 
can hear it. If you're a regular reader of Google News, you might read dozens of articles every month. But wouldn't it be nice to keep track of what you're reading most? With Google News badges, you can learn about your reading habits, create a more personalized experience on Google News, and find articles on your favorite topics, from world news to sports or entertainment. Let's say you're a basketball fan. As you read basketball articles across Google News, you'll also start earning badges. And the more you read, the more your badges will level up. Badges not only help you keep track of what you read, they also make it easier to add personalized news sections on the topics you care about most. Just hover over a badge, click Add Section, and your new section will show up in the Google News navigation bar. In addition to creating a more personalized news experience, badges can also help you loop in friends on your favorite news topics. Your badges are private by default, but you can choose to share them across your social network if you want to find shared interests with friends or spark conversations around certain topics. So keep track of what you're reading, read more of what you like, and share what you love with friends. Come badge up on Google News. So anyway, what they want us to do now on Google News is start earning badges. <laughs> do I want to earn badges on Google News? You know, it's like being on So they're going to show more relevance the more time you mark stuff up. Um, and you can plus one it. And you can send it over to Google Plus and <sighs> to earn badges. And it sounds like a Foursquare type thing, right? So they're going to have badges like... Uh, Stock market, Harry Potter, Chicago White Sox, U.S. elections. So they're going to have all kinds of uh, uh, little little graphics that are going to go next to the news, and you'll be able to earn those badges. You know, when I read the news, beyond tech news, that's my business. Because it isn't going to take too long to start marking election stuff, start marking... You know, all of a sudden there's this even more deep profile that's public that, you know, it's, it's all out there for people to see. So, you know, you think about this for a second. If you are a hardcore Republican or you're a hardcore Democrat or you're a libertarian or whatever you may be in your political spectrum, and you start tweaking out every time there's news on one party or the other that, you know, that or you want to promote something someone's saying, what happens when you go for a job and they're doing this background on you and they, you know, the, the company might be right or left leaning or maybe down the middle and all of a sudden they see that you might be extreme right or extreme left or whatever it may be. Um, can't that affect your employability? You know, it's not supposed to, but you know, let's just be honest. They're going to look, and it could make the you know the difference here. So there's a lot of stuff out here that we're doing now online that is really getting us even more targeted. And uh, Google, boy, I tell you, they they know us already. But how much of that do we really want to make public? So I don't know. What do you guys think? I think it's a it's I'm making more big of a deal of it than I should be, or do you think these Google News badges? of your favorite topics are are correct. If I want to share something, I'll take the URL and I'll email it to someone. I don't ever try to, and if it's something that's not, you know, I, yeah, I won't put a lot of stuff up in my Twitter feed or put stuff like this, you know. Um, so what do you guys think? Do you guys think you're going to do that? Use Google badges? I don't know. Now, how many of you, okay, well, anyway, anyway, send me your feedback, geeknews at gmail.com, voicemail hotline 619-342-736. My good friend Steve, he says, Todd, you have to stop, you have to take a breath in between articles. <laughs> he says, you're just one long, continuous, you just, you don't stop. You just, you know, you just go from one subject to the next. I guess that's the way I've always been, 680 some shows, right? And you guys are used to it, but... uh that's how we keep the keep the show moving here. There's a good article over on windowssteamblog.com and it's about uh, photo bombers. Do you guys know about photo bombers? You know, how many of you had someone show up in a in a in a picture and you're like, "Where did that guy come from?" or "Where did that gal come from?" And why did, you know, you get this picture that you absolutely love and you're like, oh, "Why is that idiot back there?" Um they've got a good article here on how to 
basically crop out and replace uh, someone that's in that image that you don't want there through the Windows Live Photo Gallery. And uh, they've got the ability here to essentially they're calling it fuse, fuse somebody out. And um, so you can use photo fuse to create the perfect photo and get rid of that unwanted person or people. And they've got a video on this on the Windows Experience blog on uh, basically how to implement this and how to take care of it. And I'm sure we've all had one or two pictures in the past where we've had someone in there like, huh, where did this guy come from? The next topic here over at uh, techcentral.co.za. Uh, don't get too many articles. We're actually uh, going into South Africa for a tech article. But have you ever wanted to see what um, the maps of all the undersea cables look like? You know, they, they make, normally make you pay for those. And this guy, and this is not going to be real easy because we're really, let's see if I can zoom in or out yeah so what this guy's done is he's put together a map of all the different cables and let me zoom in on uh, north america here and we'll actually go over to show hawaii and it shows the cables that are coming in here so if i zoom in i can see that there is a tpc 5cn a 5 gigabit uh, fiber that's come across there's another line here that is smaller let's see if i can actually get to zoomed in far enough so what he's done he's basically given you a map shows you all the country interconnects now this this obvi is pretty nerdy and some of you say so what but this is the kind of cool stuff i like when i was living uh in guam i got to see a um a cable come in As a matter of fact i show it right here um the cable coming into uh to uh to the marianas islands and uh, it was cool. It was really cool to kind of watch that come in and be it secured. And I've always been interested on what type of cables are interconnecting us from uh, from continent to continent. And this is uh, available over at CableMap.info. And normally you'd have to pay about 250 bucks for a map that would show you every run and the speeds and so forth. It's kind of nerdy, kind of cool to look at, and uh, definitely geeky. So I'll have that link up in the show notes for you to take a peek at. Microsoft today says that it's going to have a single ecosystem for PCs, tablets, phones, and TV. Okay, so when they make this comment that by 20, in the next few years, they're going to have a single ecosystem, how, what it, does that mean that we're going to have Windows 8 on mobile devices and TVs and Xbox? Well, it appears they really are serious about aligning all the products together. And even in embedding xbox into this experience now i don't know how they're going to make that happen without because you, you know i see my son zoom through the xbox menus and it's not a windows experience so how would they change the xbox interface to more align it with windows 8 it doesn't make a lot of sense to me but uh, of course i don't know what the ui of windows 8 is going to look like either so they're also talking about maybe getting rid of the word windows as a name and that's interesting as well so we'll see where this goes but um they feel around the 2015 2016 time frame all this is going to be integrated now we know apple has done a great job in integrating but you still have a different really a different experience between your mac and your ipad or your in, in your iphone so um i don't know if they're able to pull this off and uh, time will tell on this but uh I think it's got a lot of people kind of wide-eyed here, and we'll see where it goes. But uh, considering that um, the ecosystem right at this point, it feels 39%. What are we looking at? Where, where does that equal fall into the – is that a correct graphic? Yeah, there's no context to graphics, so I'm not going to quote these percentages. 
on the growing ecosystem. They say that by 2012, 39% of the folks are going to be on your traditional Windows machine or traditional uh, desktop. 44% are going to be on some sort of gaming device. And 57% of people are going to be using a mobile device as their primary um, computing device. I feel that I'm just can hardly believe that. Um, but they feel that they're going to have over a billion, a billion units out there uh, running the Windows ecosystem. So billion five hundred sixty million to to be exact. Um, that's a lot of uh, Windows installs out there. But we will see where this goes. And uh, for those of you Windows fans, what do you think? Do you think Windows is going to be able to pull this off? In a more fun article, and uh, I know a couple of you out there that work the night shift. So please don't take this the wrong way. And it appears that uh, those of you that are working nights, um, largely overweight, um, not getting, um, how should I say this? Uh, you're missing out on some activities at home. <laughs> and um, But 79% of you think that you're negatively impacted by your shift work. So working a night shift, you feel that it's negatively impacting your, your anything you do. And um, it's pretty sad. There's a huge number of folks out there that work uh, work night shift. They say there's uh, um, a growing number of people as well that are working night shifts. Now, I remember I used to love, when I was in the Navy, I used to love working nights. And the reason I did is because there was no brass around we could get a lot of work done there wasn't all these stupid meetings and training and all this other stuff that the day people on uh, days would have to do at nights it was all business we could we could get a lot of maintenance done and um with 15 15 million americans performing some type of shift work um in specific men they uh say that the fellows are gonna have to watch out for your health and uh it's it's not doing you well to work on these uh work these uh the shift work so I have this link up in the show notes for you to uh, to check out. All right, the ISP data retention plan has uh, hit Capitol Hill and has hit a snag. Matter of fact, one of the sponsors of the bill has basically said, hey, this thing needs a lot of work. And uh, he's trying to slow this thing down. Now, it was Representative James Sensbrenner, a Wisconsin Republican and previous chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, said that it's not ready for prime time. So he's trying to put the brakes on this thing. And uh, so this is maybe good news. Maybe we'll get a reprieve from this ISP data retention plan. Um, part of it is, is basically they are saying, hey, this thing's got a big gaping hole, this, uh, you know, this Wi-Fi issue. And uh, they say we want to figure out a way so that we do not exempt wireless providers. Uh, one of the uh, representatives, Lamar Smith, Republican of Texas, said, he said the, exempt, the exemption apparently came after lobbying from wireless companies and has already drawn sharp criticism from the Justice Department. So the lobbyist went in and said, hey, we don't want to be held uh, responsible for 18 months of data retention. But at this point, uh, the representatives are inclined to make them uh, retain the data. And that's maybe one of the reasons why the bill is not going to go through is because they're not, uh, you know, they so we'll see. We'll see where this goes, and maybe this thing's going to get uh, going to get killed. How many have any Virgin Mobile devices? I know some of you on a pay per month plan, and you you know you don't pay some months, and other months you do. Well, they have revamped their pricing, and they're going to be throttling data. So uh, Sprint owned Virgin Mobile will lower the price of its Beyond Talk Unlimited voice data and text messaging plan to fifty five dollars per month but raise the cost of its two cheaper Beyond Talk plans to $35 and $45, respectively. They don't talk about what their data plan is going to cost, but they are going to limit these plans to uh, three gigs a month. And they say that the average, uh, he said, a Virgin claimed that only 3% of its customers use more than 2.5 gigs of data. So they feel there's going to be very little effect. But once again, here we go, more throttling of data on, on mobile networks. The James Webb Space Telescope is closer to getting the axe. The, uh, of course, we talked about last week how the House Commerce, Justice, and Science Appropriations Subcommittee made the recommendation that the Advanced Infrared Space Telescope, Telescope and, and Hubble replacement be canceled on Wednesday. The full House of the Science, Space, and Technology Committee 
has approved the subcommittee's plan. There is a um, a rep- representative from California whose district is uh, part of the group that's building the uh, telescope is trying to get two hundred million dollars diverted to it, but that got uh, smashed down. So at this point, the three billion dollars we've already spent on the James Webb Space Telescope is essentially going to get flushed. And um, this is amazing. They figure it's going to six point five billion to get it in space. Um, they've already spent the money. Let's just get this thing up for the first. You know, for just blows me away. It really does. It really, it just kind of shocks me on some of the things, but you know, I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of this with all these, this, with the insanity going on with the budget right now. So we don't even want to, we don't even want to go there, do we? I think we could spend a whole hour talking about that and it would probably, we'd all get, end up mad before the end of the show. I want to share with you, and I don't normally play this many videos, but I want to share this new thing they're doing uh, as an experiment called Browser ID with the uh, Firefox and the Mozilla group. So let me bring this up and let me show you. What do you guys think about this? I'd love to hear you guys' feedback. Well, let me play this and it'll be pretty apparent uh, how, this thing, uh, how this thing works. Hi. Hi, I'm Dan Mills from Mozilla Labs and I'm going to give you a quick tour of our new experimental project, Browser ID. Browser ID makes it easy to sign into websites. No longer do you have to pick some arbitrary username and make up a complicated password that's so easy to forget. Instead, you just use your existing email address. Let's see it in action at our demo site, myfavoritebeer.org. On this site, when you click Sign In, Browser ID takes over and displays a window with your email addresses. You select the address that you want to use, click the Sign In button, and you're instantly signed in to the site with that email address. So how does this work? Well, the Browser ID service verifies your email addresses and vouches for your ownership of them so individual sites don't need to. So how do you verify an email address? Let's take a look. Back at myfavoritebeer.org, if I hadn't used Browser ID before, when I click Sign In, I'll be prompted to type in my email and Browser ID password. To sign in, I type my email address and pick a password. One single new password for browser ID that will replace all the passwords on all the sites that I currently have to remember. The final step is to verify my ownership of the email address I provided, a flow which should look familiar. I open up my email, open the message, click on the link, and now I've proven that this email address is mine. Back in the browser ID pop-up, I can now hit continue and select the email address to sign in. The next time I use Browser ID to log into any site, this email address is all set up and I don't need to verify it again. I hope you are as excited as we are about Browser ID. It's still experimental, and right now is a great time to try it out and give us your feedback. Head over to BrowserID.org to learn about how to use it on your site and find links to the source code and specification. Follow news from the identity team at Mozilla. Be sure to check out identity.mozilla.com our new blog, where we'll be posting updates on our work. Thanks for listening. I think this is pretty cool. I think this would be awesome. And it's kind of a a nice, secure way to log into websites and not have to have a different login. As long as you can keep your your email secure, you're good. And uh, I think this is an interesting development. So... I'm going to turn this over to Angelo at um, on my team. I'm going to say, hey, what do you think about this? I'm sure this is going to be slow to implement, but it could it could really solve a lot of security issues out there. So I've only got the show notes for you. Again, it's identity.mozilla.com. Also, if you've got any kids that are 13 years old, do not let them go on to Google+. Plus or do not uh, indicate their age anywhere on Google because... Uh, Google is being very strict about killing uh, web accounts or webmail accounts about uh, folks that are under the age of 13 using the service. So be careful out there. Uh, some folks have lost their email accounts um, recently because they've basically updated their profile showing that they're of a certain age. Now, I've got email accounts reserved for all my kids on Gmail, but I haven't gave them access to them yet um, until they get a little older. But... Um, Anyway, so be careful out there with your kids uh, with Google and in Gmail, making sure they don't 
basically put that they're under 13 out there. There's a good uh, study that was done and reported on by mercurynews.com. A new study confirms that Google is altering our brains. More precisely, our growing dependency on the Internet has changed how and what our brains choose to remember. You know, you have to think about it. Ah, just Google it, right? Just Google it. You can find it. Just Google it. How many times have you had to look something up that you said, I should know that, but you can't remember it, and you have to Google it? But they're finding, this uh, This finding was published in the Journal of Science, doesn't prove that Google, Yahoo, or other search engines are making us dumber, as some have assisted, yet they're still seeing some declines in human behavior that uh, are a little different than what was before we all got online. So... Uh, Pretty cool read here. I'll have this link up in the show notes for you to uh, to check out. Hey, YouTube has uh, blocked Lady Gaga's channel. Apparently, she uh, linked to some uh, video or had a video up there of a, uh, of a program she was on in Japan. And the Japanese television station, uh, even though it was her singing, said, hey, this is our content. You can't put it up on YouTube. And she got her site shut down. I'm sure that'll only be for a few days. Hey, if you uh, hack your neighbor's Wi-Fi in the state of Minnesota and you do something uh, criminal on that connection, uh, you may get an 18-year prison term because just this week, a Minnesota hacker has uh, been described as a depraved criminal, was handed an 18-year prison term Tuesday for unleashing a vendetta of cyber terror that turned his neighbor's lives into a living nightmare. Apparently, this guy hacked into his neighbor's Wi-Fi in 2009 and used it to try and frame them for child pornography, sexual harassment, various kinds of professional misconduct, and to send threatening email to politicians, including, including the vice president. So, um, but this is even sicker. Okay. His motive was to get back at the new neighbors after they told police that he'd kissed their four-year-old son on the lips. Now, here in Hawaii, everyone gets kissed on the cheek. But can you imagine a new neighbor picking your kid up and kissing your kid on the lips? He wouldn't have had to have... He wouldn't have had a chance, <laughs> for a better word. He would not have had to a chance to hack my... Uh, to hack my Wi-Fi. Because his fingers would have been broke, along with a few other bones. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now, it turns out the guy they moved in next door was a pedophile. <sighs> what a nightmare. But he is in the slammer for 18 years. <sighs> Just makes me sick. There's a lot of sick people out there. A lot of sick stuff been going on, isn't it? You know, ah, oh, just what's been in the news has been thoroughly revolting. All right, let, let's move off the disgusting stuff and let's just talk about greed. Crime doesn't pay, but apparently it does if you're a phone crammer. Um, Congress has been uh, investigating these all basically arbitrary charges that are showing up on your bills, specifically. One company was charging fourteen ninety five a month for gaming, and they had they were making like a million dollars a month by charging customers for this gaming. So the congressional staff wanted to figure out, okay, how popular is this gaming site as they were getting ready to go into hearings. Um, when they logged into the game site and just logged into a game, they become the top scorer <laughs> without even registering any points. And this was game after game. So it was obvious that no one had been using this, yet they'd been charging people fourteen ninety five a month. Um, pay attention to your bills. Link will be up in the show notes. This here is something that uh, a lot of people are getting charged for and they don't even know. Hey, Wright Haven's back at it. They're refiling lawsuits and stuff. So, you know, they're trying to uh, continue moving on. The judge is not happy, but just can't uh, keep this company out of the news. That's for sure. Apple is up. They've sold 11% of all U.S. computers last quarter and taking third place. So they're on the move with their stuff. The French copyright cops are swamped with their three-strike three complaints. They, are, they have 18 million people that they have to contact to let them know that they've hit their first strike. They're so far backlogged, they've only been able to reach 400. I mean, 
and 470,000. Now remember, France is a population of 65 million. So they've got 18 million, <laughs> almost a third of the population is out there uh, file sharing. So 18 of the 65 million people that live in France are going to get their first strike notice. Um, boy, what would happen if uh, all of them continue and they got three strikes and, and one third of the French population dropped off the internet? I think that's a losing proposition. Uh, the folks at BlackBerry are preparing to launch an Apple TV competitor. So we'll see where that goes. Google's quarter two numbers were uh, pretty good. 550,000 Android devices are being activated every day. Google Plus has more than 10 million Google Plus users and just invite basically where they're not even opened up. YouTube is getting 3 billion daily views. Uh, they made a bunch of money as well. They cleared uh, multiple billions of dollars, I believe. So... Um, there was a pretty good call. This was the first one where co-founder CEO Larry Page was actually uh, making the uh, the conference call. So a lot of people tuned into that, and he shared a lot of this uh, information that they have up on the website. He want to point out that we started doing a TPN Weekly again. So if you want to uh, get a, uh, find out about new shows and uh, get it dialed in on what's going on with uh, with shows at Tech Podcast Network, the first one was put up a few days ago, and it was by Norbert Davis and his Totally Cool Tech Podcast. So definitely check out that. And it's, of course, in the Tech Podcast feed at techpodcast.com. Um, let's see. I think that's it. All I've got. I've got some more stuff here, but I'm really out of time. And uh, skip that. Yeah, I don't need to do this one here. Um, I think that's it for content and what I want to go through. I got some more stuff, but again, I'm out of time. Let me open up and see what we've got for email here so we can get everybody out of here by an hour 10 tonight. Um, we didn't have those audio problems at the beginning. We'd have been a little further down the road, wouldn't we? We're going to start a contest on the next show. It's going to be a big one so that we can, uh, well, we're going to try to keep you guys interested here during the uh, dog days of summer. But I want to thank Ron for his submission of the Lady Gaga YouTube account um, submission. I don't want to thank Barry on his email. He basically says, hey, Todd, have you seen this article yet? It's worth your while talking about the EFF piling in against forced decryption. So that We've talked about that on the show a few times already. We know that this uh, lady who is uh, being asked to um, basically uh, put in her password to decrypt her hard drive is going to have a hearing on this on August 20th. Got a helicopter flying by. You can tell the windows are open. Pretty close, too. Um, we've already talked about the Minnesota Wi-Fi hacker. Thanks, for Trucker Tom, for sending that over. And I uh, got an email here from... From Lamar, I said, hey, Todd, I still listen to the Gadget podcast, and it's not as good as it was with Josh and crew. I think Josh and crew leaving the show shows how valuable they were. People get used to certain things. I'm not sure how much longer I will be listening to that podcast. He says, keep doing your show because I doubt anyone could do it the way you do it. Take care, Lamar from Chicago. Of course, I'm going to continue the show. Um Got an email here from Chris. He's on show 685. You mentioned an adapter for using your Canon DSL lens with your iPhone. Never mind that to check out these plastic toy camera lens you can use on your DSL. Turn your $1,000 DSL into a $50 toy camera, laugh out loud. And I can recommend the company Holga Direct. Their service has been tremendous. I have one of my, I have one of them for my Nikon D300 and also for my Sony NEX5. And I have to say, I love the results I'm getting. Check out the shots on Flickr. And let me look at this kit that he's talking about here. And real quickly. Oh, yeah, these are adapter kits. So I have this link up in the show notes. You guys can check this out. And going back to email here before we run out of time. Got an email from Ron. He says, uh, found this on surfing, but writing was always on the wall. He says, uh, the Palm brand is dead, dead, dead. Also, you may like what's, to see what's happening in Canada, UBB that seems to be leaking into the U.S. Talks about open media, so I have this link up in the show notes. So I don't exactly know what that's about. And have we read that one here? I think we're good on, has this article already been covered? Yeah, I think so. All right, everyone, thanks for, uh, for hanging out with me here tonight. And, of course, uh, feel free to drop me an email at uh, geeknews at gmail.com geeknews at gmail.com voicemail hotline is 619-342-7365 
Hey, how do you guys like in the format? Has everything been, thing been good? Front loading with the more important stuff and kind of going quick at the end with kind of the arbitrary stuff. Love to hear you guys' feedback on that and uh, just kind of in, in general how the show's going. I want to thank everyone that filled out the listener survey. That has really helped me kind of dial in. The, sh the show demographics has shifted a little bit. All I can say is you guys make one heck of a lot of money. <laughs> So you can afford to be an insider, okay? Geeknewcentral.com forward slash insider. If you didn't lie on your survey, a very large number of you can afford 2 or $3 a month to support the show. <laughs> I know. All right. I won't hassle you on that. Thanks for listening. Everyone take care. We'll see you next go around. Take care and aloha.